Today I've got a pretty cool tutorial on a 3D card UI. And this is based on the UI that you've probably seen in iOS Safari. When you view your tabs, all the current pages go into a 3D uh, into a 3D arrangement and you can scroll through them and then tap one and that one rotates in 3D back to take up the full screen. So I'm going to recreate a version of that and it's going to use some more advanced Flinto techniques for creating reusable transitions. Next week, I'm planning on spending the whole week doing videos on a comprehensive app design. So I'm going to start with the concept and go through to a robust prototype. So look forward to that. Subscribe if you don't want to miss any of my daily videos. So what I've done is taken a few screenshots of some websites and I'm setting this up in Sketch. I've got an artboard for each of the screens that I'm going to have. So one for each of these three websites just bitmap images of screenshots. Then on this page, I've got three, uh, those same three websites, but I put them in a group and I put a gradient layer inside so that they'd have this um, kind of fade up from the bottom. And you can see that there on the Wikipedia one, and there it is on the Apple one and the Daring Fireball one. So on this screen here, the index, they're gonna be, the screens are gonna be uh, in 3D but Sketch doesn't support 3D rotation, so I'm gonna do that once I import this into Flinto, which I'm ready to do now. So I'm gonna to go to Plugins, Send to Flinto. Okay, so here I am in Flinto for Mac, and I can start prototyping this, but the first thing I need to do is make sure that these are 3D rotated. So let me just select one of these, and I'm gonna rotate around the X axis, and you can see, well, let me do this one, you can see it more easily. You can see how that's gonna rotate. The thing is, I want it to rotate from the top. And I can do that by setting the Y origin. So you see here, origin Y to 0%. And now what, watch what happens when I rotate around X. See how it rotates from the top? Okay, so let me put this one back down here. I'm gonna select all three of those, set the Y origin to zero. And I'm actually gonna set the Y origin to all of these images in each of the other screens to zero as well. Uh, I'm gonna connect those to the layers in this screen, and I want them to share the same origin. Okay, now the 3D rotation. Let me just scale these down a little bit, and I'm gonna rotate all of those around the X axis. And I wanna use a black background, so I'm just gonna click in the empty area of the canvas, click background color, and choose black. Okay, now I'm ready to start creating the transition. And I'm gonna make one transition that I reuse on all three of these screens. So when you tap any one of these screens, it takes you to the corresponding uh, page using the same transition. I'll show you how you can reuse it appropriately so that it works properly for three different screens. Okay, so with the Daring Fireball screen selected, I'll click Create Link and link that to the Daring Fireball screen and make a new transition. I'll call this 3D Card. That's the name of this transition. I'm gonna align the screens, clicking the Align Screens checkbox. And then I'll select the um, screen here, choose Connect Layers, and then target the corresponding screen in the start screen. Sorry, the corresponding uh, website. So with those connected, now I can toggle back and forth. Okay, but this is on top of all the other uh, screens, which doesn't look good. And the way to fix that is using the connected layer Z index option. So right now it's set to match to higher. And that means that the layer from the start screen was brought up that's this one here, was brought up into the end screen so that these can be connected, they're in the same uh, location. But I want actually this one, the full page, which is the layer in the end screen, to be brought down to the start screen. So I'll choose Z index match to lower with one of those connected layers selected. Now you can see it starts in the correct place. And when I toggle, it's still behind everything else, which doesn't look good, but we can solve that by sliding these other two screens off the bottom. So I'll slide those down and I'm gonna give them a little extra rotation. So I'll rotate them around to like 40. And now we're starting to get the actual look of this transition that we want. And for this, uh, for the Daring Fireball page, this is set up perfectly, this will work nicely. I can actually exit out of here. I'm gonna put a backlink on this entire screen. And I can do that by just pressing B on my keyboard. That creates a backlink really quickly. I'll open the preview. I'll tap Daring Fireball, tap it again, and we go back. So that's looking really nice. And I just wanna set that same transition now for the other two uh, screens. But before I do that, I'm gonna go back in and edit the one I was working on. 
and I want to change some of the names of these tags. Now these tags show up on any layer that's being animated or moved or modified in your transition. And they're not the same as the layer name. Well, initially they are, but you can change it. So this one says wiki and this one says apple. This one is full page and this one's daring. Okay, so for daring, that's the one that's connected to the full page layer. And full page is the layer in the end screen that takes up the entire screen. So daring is the one that is being tapped on. So I'm gonna change the name of this to selected. Because when I reuse this transition, I'm gonna to need to apply this tag to the appropriate group. And it's not gonna be daring fireball. It's gonna be either Apple or Wiki. And this is gonna make it easier to understand that I need to apply this tag to the layer that's being activated in that instance of the transition. Okay, now full page is fine, Apple. Now, so another thing that I know I'm gonna to need to do is in the other instances of this transition, I'm gonna animate the other two screens in a slightly different way. So I'm gonna name these in a little bit more descriptive way. Instead of Apple, I'm gonna call this uh, bottom one, and I'll call wiki bottom two. And that's just my way of remembering that this one's going off the bottom, but it's the first one, and then this one's off the bottom and it's the second one below it. Now I'll exit out of here. So changing the names of those tags didn't change the behavior at all, but when I go in here to create or assign the transition to this screen, you'll see how those come in handy. So I'll click create link, target the appropriate screen, and I'm gonna use the same transition 3D card, but I'll click edit so that I can make sure the tags are set up properly. Now you'll see full page got applied to the full page group because the name of the tag matches the name of the layer, and that's a descriptive name, so it's fine. But I changed the name of all the other ones, and so those are in the unassigned tag area because uh, Flinter doesn't know where to put those. And remember, selected is the one that's being tapped on. And this instance of the transition, I tapped on the Apple screen. So I want to apply selected to Apple. See that? So now the Apple one is zooming up. Let's look at what would happen if I applied it to the wrong screen. Like instead of selected being Apple, if I put it on daring, now it fades up from daring to Apple. And that obviously looks really wrong. So let's make sure this is on Apple. And now let's account for the other ones. So Wikipedia is gonna go off the bottom and I'm gonna use the bottom one tag because that sends it down for Wiki. Okay, so now uh, the Wikipedia one gets out of the way and I just want the Daring Fireball one to fly up towards the top. So let's set that up. So I can't, I can't uh, reach that Daring Fireball screen because I've got this connected layer blocking it. So I'll select it in the layer list and use shift and arrow up until I can see it and I'll grab it and I'm just gonna slide it all the way off and rotate that a little bit this way. So I'll go to negative 50, put it like right there. And I'll call this tag top one, because that's the first screen going off the top. Okay, that looks good. I'll exit out of here. I need to make sure that I have a backlink on this Apple screen. So I'll select it, tap B, and let's go to the preview and make sure that everything still works. So Daring Fireball, Still works, the Apple one works nicely. Okay, we've got one more, that's the Wikipedia one. So I'll select that, click Create Link, target the Wikipedia screen, choose the same 3D card transition and click Edit. So selected in this case, what is it? It's the Wikipedia screen. So we can see that that animates up from Wikipedia, which is selected to Wikipedia, which is the full page one. And now both of these are gonna slide off the top. So I'm gonna to use top one on the Apple screen. So let's uh, apply that tag. And I don't have a top two, so I need to create that one. And I'll do it just like I did before. Select it in the layer list, uh, nudge it up a little bit, grab onto it, slide it up here. And let's set that rotation to negative 50. So now I have all three instances of my transition set up. And let me just make a backlink from Wikipedia. And I'll open the preview. Try that one and then make sure the other two still work. So all three of these work really nicely now. And this is a really cool effect. And it's great that we were able to create it using one transition. Now, this was a little bit more of an advanced technique because you saw how I was managing all those tags and applying tags in different transition instances. You could recreate this transition three times if you found that easier. But what's nice about doing it once is that I could go into any one of these links that use that same 3D card transition and edit the transition. And maybe I wanna select 
you know, this main one and change the easing so that it's more bouncy. Okay, I don't exactly like how that looks, but my point is that now that I've done it, it works on all of these. So now the selected one is like super bouncy across all the instances of that transition. So it's really great if you need to tweak something in one instance of the transition and have it apply to all of them. As I go through and fine tune how this transition works, I already did all the work of setting it up, applying the tags, making sure that the uh, all the differences in animation work uh, between instances of this transition. And now I can go and make some tweaks to it and those get applied everywhere. So that's kind of a power user technique, but it's part of the beauty of how Flintover Max Transition Designer is built because it allows for that reuse of animations.